Hello and welcome to Love and Sounds Off, where we talk about books, music, and a whole lot more. I'm your host, Logan Kelly. For anybody who doesn't know um, this wonderful man over here, this is um, Graham Hopkins and he is my uncle and he is a world class drummer and he's played with Therapy and Snow Patrol. So how are you, Graham? I'm good, Logan. How are you doing? It's great to talk to you. It's overdue, isn't it? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Um, So the first question that I wanted to ask was, um, when was the first time you realized you wanted to be a drummer? Well, I think I always knew I wanted to be a drummer because, as you know, my dad is a drummer. So he, my dad, Des Hopkins, who only lives around the corner from you, he has always been the drummer. So I was brought up surrounded by music and surrounded by drums. And my grandfather, Jim Hopkins, was also a drummer and a musician. And my grandmother, Rita Hopkins was also a musician playing piano. So I was just brought up surrounded by music. It was in your blood. Yes, completely. So I used to go to gigs with my dad growing up. And um, I just, uh, it just kind of music was just always a part of me. And uh, there was nothing else I, else I thought of ever that I wanted to be. It was just being a musician, being a drummer, you know. That leads me to my next question, actually. Apart from the drums, do you play any other instruments? And if so, what are they? And do you enjoy playing them? Well, at the very same time as starting to play drums, I started to play guitar and piano. We always had a piano in our house. And um, so it was just what was always drumming, playing guitar, playing piano. So I just always played them all, you know. Um, so drumming definitely was your um, biggest one. What, what's your favourite drum kit that you have? Well, my own favourite one is... It's one that's right in front of me here. It's called, it's a 1955 WFL Blue Sparkle uh, drum kit. And uh, I acquired it over 20 years ago when I used to play in the band called The King or in a band called Therapy. Wow. And I've listened to Therapy before. They're great. Um, So while you were drumming along, with that drum kit, so that's been true a lot then. Yeah, it has been. A lot of songs with that, yeah. Um, with your drum kits, how many do you have? Too much, too many. <laughs> but like, I've, I've, there's a couple of drum kits that I've, um, that I've sold, and there's one in particular that belonged to my dad, and then he gave it on to me. That's the only drum kit that I kind of feel I regret that uh, getting rid of it selling it on but generally um, I'm happy with all the ones that I have and a lot of them especially snare drums you know snare drums yeah yeah and uh, even in my studio that we're in now I'll turn it around really quick and these are all the favorite ones that I can you see this rack yeah Yeah. here that rack just there, that's all snare drums that I use for recording here. And um, uh, I, otherwise it's full of, I have lots of drum kits here and there. And there's, yeah, there's, I have too many, but I can't, I can't, I can't sell them for sacred reasons, you know? Yeah. It's like I know lots of guitarists and bass players, and they're exactly the same. They they feel they 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 need them for this song and that song, and they need that they they 
always buy new guitars for this and that. And I've been with different drum companies that have helped me out and they're called endorsements. Of, uh, have you heard of endorsements where they kind of help me out for tours and for uh, recording and I support them and I use uh, their drums at the moment I'm with Ludwig drums who Ringo Starr from from the Beatles uh, oh. really used uh, you, you know made them so famous but before that there was so many jazz drummers that used Ludwig drums, they're originally from Chicago in the States. So I was brought up, uh, so many jazz drummers used them. And uh, and then there was John Bonham from uh, Led Zeppelin used them. So for me to be used them now is just so special, along with uh, Zildjian cymbals, you know cymbals? Yeah. I use them and I use Vic Firth drumsticks. Yeah, Vic Firth. Who's your favourite drummer? It's the hardest question to uh, answer. One, one of them, because immediately I went, oh God, I'm pigeonholing him here. Immediately after I had said it, who's one of the one of your favourites? One of them one. is on the Graham Hopkins Hall of Fame there. I have, like, I have a list. I was only talking about it with a friend, a good friend of mine, a drummer the other day. And I, about, during the COVID, I actually made a list, but it's about 10 or 15 of some of my favourites. And on it, there are people like Gene Krupa, who's a real famous jazz drummer who during the 30s and 40s, he made a really influential uh, good name for himself, who was brought up listening wow. to him as a kid. He's again from Chicago, like I just mentioned. But then um, there's drummers like um, Jeff Beccaro, or who drummed in a band called Toto, but you also hear him playing oh, with yeah, people. Yeah. He plays on songs by Michael Jackson and people like that, you know. Uh, drummers like Steve Gadd, who plays um, uh, with like a really, really famous song called 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover by Paul Simon. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I was only listening to Paul Simon today. Uh, right. Do you know yeah. what song it was? I think it was like Karma Something. Okay. Uh, it was one of his big ones. Um, I forget what it was, but it was on like the very best and I had it on vinyl and I was listening to it now on Logan's Sounds Off, which is now up on social media today. Okay. Um, so where See this they? drummer behind me, just yes. there. Yes. That's a guy called Lee Von Helm from the band, who I was very fortunate to meet a few times and hang out with him. Wow. And he's definitely, beyond belief, one of my favourite drummers and singers at the same time. You can see him in this picture. He's drumming and singing at the same time. And I have so much uh, respect uh, for that guy who has influenced me so much. And uh, wow, that's, that's amazing. Exceeding sure is. Drumming. Yes. And it's great to hear that people, a lot of the time, influence me. And it's cool to hear people who influence you because I'm not being biased here because you're my uncle, but you are a great um, drummer. So it's nice to see how it started off for you with this guy who inspired you. Yeah. Yeah, well, he really has. And there's been lots. I think at the end of the day, my number one drummer is the reason I drum is my father, Des Hopkins, who you know well, because without him, I wouldn't... Uh, be playing drums and he's 80 now and he's still he's got so much energy he still plays the drums he still hits the bejesus out of him he's still pushing <laughs> the band who he plays with he's phenomenal you know he really well, is you you've seen him play haven't you i'm fairly sure i have somewhere i'm very yeah. sure i have i'd have have to share and mm. um, and now for the concert side of things with drumming and um, what was your favourite kind of venues to play at um, as gigs? Like, you probably would have had some of them that you would have loved to play at. Do you have any on that comes to mind? Uh, I, I have lots that I've played, like, worldwide, like, memorable 
concerts and festivals. I've been fortunate to kind of, very fortunate to travel all over the world and play some like of the big venues, the famous yeah. big venues like like Sydney Opera House and Royal Albert Hall and Hollywood Bowl and Radio City. Like they're the big kind of famous venues. But being really, really honest, if you do a global tour, there's something so special about coming home to Ireland and playing um, like um, Vicar Street in Dublin or Whelan's in Dublin, where you oh, know. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah, and because you know that after touring to come home there, finishing off a big tour, that the audience are going to be so welcoming, they're going to be so just on fire. And uh, that's so special. But uh, I can't name one show that just sticks out. It's very hard to do yeah. that, you know. Um, so, wow, is it hard to play as a drummer at a gig, but at the same time, is it fun? Oh, it's fun. I've never found it hard. I've always just found it fun. Fun. to As a professional, okay, sometimes you have to stick um, to the music that you're, you know, you're part of the band, you're part of, it, you're part of the, the song, the structure, everything. So you have to stick to the rules of the song and the rules of the band and everything. So um, uh, that can be um, not, not hard, but kind of to a degree, um, uh, you're, you're under pr pressure to do it. So I don't yeah. know how to say it exactly, especially if you're under a big, big audience. But... Um, uh, generally I just love it I remember one of my biggest gigs was in like when I joined the band therapy and yeah. I toured a lot okay and one of the, the big we came home from a, a like it was for me it was my first tour I did with the band okay yeah. and it was touring all over the states okay and it was great oh, that must have been so that would have been was so great. fun but going around everything wow that must have been so but fun. But then we came back to the festival, okay, in Holland, and we were nearly at the top of the bill. And just on before us was, you know, do you know the band Rage Against the Machine? Oh, yes. Oh, and yes. Go to on. see them, and I was always a big fan, but they were on before us, and to see them, and I just went off the side of the stage and got sick. And I actually got sick because I was the most nervous I've ever been in my life. Isn't and it I, like, sorry, isn't it like Zach LaRocha or some his singer's name? Just seeing him go, yes. Yeah, just seeing him go spare on stage must have been so entertaining with his yeah. king in the name of an evil empire track. Yeah. Yeah, wow, such an experience though. So, and to know that we had to go on after them. And I was, well I, well, I think it was 19 or 20. So that scared the life You out were of me. 19 or 20 playing with therapy after Rage yeah. Against the Machine. And so, but once I got up on stage, I was in charge. I was behind the drum kit in charge of the band. So I was, made my, made my life. So that was the most nervous I've ever been. And as soon as I got behind the drum kit, uh, uh, within about four bars of the song, I was fine. Yeah, God, though. <laughs> playing at the same concert of Rage Against the Machine that just shows how accomplished you got. Um, at that early in your life, at 20 years of age, is yours. that's amazing. And then with therapy, um, I was listening to Church and Noise and stuff, um, and I loved their album Semi Detached and stuff. So to be playing with them after Rage Against the Machine that's very impressive. And it's definitely something that you can say for the rest of your life. So and there's there's been amazing. lots of gigs like that. So it was a it was a an amazing time. I was at the band for six years, and the festivals were all so special like that. The lineups and stuff like that. It was a, a mad time. It was great. The thing about accomplishments, what was it like playing? I think it was backup. I think and um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, which your own band Haylight. Yeah, um, 
How was that? Was that good? Uh, that was great. That was amazing as well, playing Slane Castle. And that, yeah, that was Slane great. Now. Yeah, because I've got it now down here. Um, that it was in Slane, yeah. I think it was... Um, you were a support, sorry, not a backup, a support to Red Hot Chili Peppers. And uh, did you see them that day or were you off to do another concert or go home after? Oh, no, I saw the whole lineup oh, okay. that day. And there was, a, I think it was probably the best lineup that um, that Slane ever had. It was like the Foo Fighters, Queens of Stone oh, no Age, uh, PJ Harvey. Uh, feeder, uh, it was, it was. I've amazing. heard of all of them, but never feeder. Right. Okay. You you check out feeder. I bet you like them. Is they it just, P H or F? Of oh, F, okay, F E E D E R. I'll yeah. check out that because if they were in a lineup like that, they've got to be good. <laughs> yeah. So it was the best. So to be part of that was spectacular. It was really great, and that was Chad, the drummer from. Uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers and he got us on that lineup and invited us to play it so it was special so now we lead me to my next question with that we're talking about drumming and how it's your life and that you really enjoy it. if you weren't a drummer what would you be? If I'd, you know? I'd be uh, a, what's called a drum tech setting up drums or do you want something completely different? Like and like a drum tech is technically a different job, but yeah, go for something like like completely different. Way oh my god. Way. Oh my god, I actually have no idea. I would be useless. I would be I don't know. Look, there's a radiator be right beside. I don't know. I'd be going around fixing radiators, but then at the same <laughs> time, I am completely absolutely useless you can ask your mother and father about it about it i am um, absolutely yeah. useless at everything else well I, i'm just I, thinking with like your rooms and stuff where you're using your sticks and stuff you could be pressing buttons and stuff with your sticks and stuff just there would be some job out there for you like what Definitely. suggest a job um, next question. <laughs> Go on, no, suggest a job. Go I, on. I don't know. Um, what do you think? What do you think I'd be good at doing, maybe? I don't know why this popped into my head, but carpentry. Yeah. I don't know. Carpentry. carpentry. All right. Yeah. Okay. But then I'd have to, yeah, you know, I don't know. Okay, I'll give it a go. You, you, could, you could try any job. Like, the way I think of it is, how do you know if you've never done it? That's very true. Very true. Um. So yeah, being a drummer, um, is it, was there any point in life where you didn't want to be a drummer? Where you, when you went, no, I don't want to be a drummer, I'm going to quit. Was there ever that kind of feeling ever? No, but I've, while you're saying that, uh, I just thought of something as my job. Oh, okay. Can Back I rewind? Uh, because my passion, my love, my desire is actually coffee, quality coffee. Can I become a roaster? Oh, that is the perfect job. Because once you said coffee, I went, perfect, perfect. And I know your dad, <laughs> who has has worked in the world of coffee, he knows well as well, as well as you know that I love coffee. And I've got a coffee in my hand right now. That, that would probably give us a good clue. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that's what I'll do. Uh, um, yeah. I'll definitely. And then as far as your next uh, question, which was? Um, did you ever think, like, say, um, was there any moment where you just went, oh, I don't want to be a drummer? That, I think that was a question, yeah. Yeah, no. I let... Uh, not even once, not even once. It's all I love. It's my absolute passion. It's what I do is think about music as well as kind of when I like I'm in my studio, when I go home every night, when I go to bed and go to sleep, I put 
like these on that I'm wearing or headphones and I listen to music when I go to bed. When I'm driving my car, I listen to music. Um, it's my life, it's my occupation, my job, it's, it's everything to me. The way I'm just saying, the way you're saying this, it's kind of led me to something that I actually sometimes do. I could be eating my dinner, I could be reading a book, I could be sitting on a couch doing nothing. And nothing. immediately something musical could come into my head. Has that yeah. ever happened with you? That you just went, oh, that's a nice drum beat. I better see, can I play it? And yeah. Or can I improve on it? Has that ever came into your mind? Constantly, absolutely, constantly, all the time. It's like a daily, I'd say not even daily, it's... Uh, a minutely kind of thing that happens to me. Those kind of things have happened to me all my life, you know, and then I'll even just be playing something on my knees or working out something in my... I used to get in trouble in school all the time for playing on the no on the table and teachers oh, yeah, just like, get used like, to it, you know? Like, go. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's actually kind of sad. You were into music and you were just tapping against the table and you get in trouble. Well, if only the teachers knew this is what it would turn out like. I don't think they'd be whinging then. <laughs> I, I got this the teacher in secondary school that did this thing called, um, what was it called? Your teacher, your father will know him well. He used to do um, kind of... Oh, what was it? I forget what it was called, but it used to be kind of future or college. Um, uh, like work for helping you out with your future. And when I told him all I wanted to do was be a musician, he couldn't take it seriously. He he said, "Oh no, Graham, you have to uh, take oh, this no seriously." Way. You know? Yeah. Ah, oh, no way. Yeah. That so. That's crazy that so many people have said, don't do it, stop doing it, it won't work out, when yeah. it has worked out. Um, so it's good for kids now who are in secondary school and they're talking to a random fella who my dad will know, and the fella's telling them you can't be a drummer. So that's very inspiring for a lot of people out there who don't think they can be a lot of things when you can. You just got to give yourself the chance. Yeah, and there's a lot of inspiring things that you can watch that give lessons if they can't go to a, a musical teacher of every, any instrument, that is. Um, you, there's a lot of good stuff you can watch online that will give you lessons for free. And there's a lot of good colleges that there wasn't um, years ago when I was younger that you can go to. And like a great college is called BIM in Dublin. That is great. And it does not only for um, uh, instruments, but for music technology and for teaching everybody uh, all sides of the music industry. It's great. And now when you were saying about teaching and stuff, have you ever taught anyone or given someone like a simple lesson on drumming? I have indeed. And even that college that we're talking about, for yeah. the first two years that it started, I helped set it up and get all tutors together. No and I, way. I was a drum teacher there for um, two years. And as well as that, over the years, I've gave, given lots and lots of drum lessons to different students. Now, it's the question on everybody's mind. Did the students like you? Were you a strict teacher or a uh, nice teacher? Very, very strict. Given out to them, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll be, I'll be phoning people going, does Graham Hopkins teach you? Okay, bye now. Does Graham Hopkins teach you? <laughs> Asking about it. Um, no, well, that's amazing that you're able to, that you were able to teach and share your passion. Um, and I bet you kids are now out there and they're drumming away because you help them. Yeah, so hopefully so. Cool. I think so. If you play an instrument and you like it, it's good to now and again, I I think. Would you agree? Now and again, would you like to talk to other kind of DJs and stuff about what you do and give them your kind of um, 
your side of things and what you've been doing and you know big time because with no one sounds off and no one's right basically we set it all up for get for me getting an idea what a dj was like as i'm into music um, and i'm into all types of music jazz arabian rock punk and um, rap i don't care as long as music i'll check it out and um, Communication basically was the main thing. Talking to other people, making connections, making friends, and doing these interviews. Yes. And then sharing it with other people so I can communicate with them and see, did yeah. you like this? What are your thoughts? Do you disagree? Do you agree? Are you not sure about it? So that's basically one of the reasons why Logan's Five and Logan Sounds Off was set up. Yes. Of course. And then if people ask you more and more about it, just tell them that. And you might even go to colleges and then give your your side of the, the story and you might be invited to places. And then as time moves on, you might be asked to kind of give lessons. And then who knows? You just have to keep doing it and doing it because it's your show is great. Your playlists are brilliant. You know, uh, thank you. I know um, you, your dad, um, Des Hopkins, definitely inspired you with a lot. Um, so what were, is there any things that were small but really inspired you through life? Yeah, um, like not only, do you know what's a big thing? And this is the God, the God, well, how do I say it? This, I don't, of course. So music, <laughs> not just drummers by any yeah. chance, lots of different music which uh, adds so much influence to how I play music and this is the truth there's a guy you might know him his name is Brian Kelly and we have called him Big Z Kelly do you know that guy yeah it, it may be good to announce that he is my father so oh yeah he's I, your father I know, I, know, right. I know him a bit I know him yeah. a bit yeah um, for some reason, I didn't invite him in. He's downstairs in my living room, and I don't know why. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, when when we were uh, young, I've known your father all my life growing up together. But we used to go to this place called the Youth Club in Clane. And I oh, remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Continue, and, your, sorry, yeah. and your dad always used to bring his ghetto blaster. Have you ever heard the word ghetto blaster? No, but it sounds dangerous. Go on. What's it used to be us? like a, a big, like two speakers, and it used to have two, it was not even CDs on it. There was yeah. two two tapes. You could take, oh, take yeah. from one tape to oh, another. Oh, tape to tape, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then your father used to bring um, all these tapes, like bands like Fugazi and The Clash and lots of other punk I bands. I can tell you, you know? that... Shelf over there is exploding with there the you go. the clash. Yeah. Oh my god, it, it's crazy. And he, and some of those tapes are like bootlegs and stuff, and I'm going, what the yeah. why the hell do you have a bootleg in here? So your dad, because of the youth club, he used to bring it in and we had this little kind of uh what well let's just call it the lounge with like sitting rooms <laughs> in it. And we used to sit around and uh that's what your dad or your dad used to play the music and it was so brilliant and uh, so he definitely turned me on to such all of that kind of punk music from the late 70s which was amazing and of course like the 80s kind of all Fugazi and all kind of Chicago kind of um, yeah. music so that he was the dude that turned me on to so much music you know. I, I never knew that. And then that leads me to the question of punk. Who, in your opinion, started up punk? Was it Ramones, Stifler Fingers, or was it the likes of Sex Pistols and bands like them? Well, it certainly wasn't the Sex Pistols. I, I, I knew it. I was going, if he's a Sex Pistols guy, I swear to God. Yeah, continue. But like, I do think first and foremost it probably came from New York. People will probably kind of bite up me, but I do think it came from New York and kind of travelled over towards um, uh, the UK, you know? Yeah, yeah, and then it kind of took off and then got kind of dirty and or dirtier because people 
weren't playing as well, but then it kind of got uh, just four, five people, you know, stuck in a band in a garage and they were just got it out of their systems and like and the Sex Pistols were one of those bands and then it was really you know like promoted and it yeah. was really got big and all of those clubs even the 100 club which was originally like a a, a jazz club and then that became like a punk rock club and everybody go yeah. there and be jumping around and uh, there were so many and then the clash became yeah. one of those but they could all play their instruments a bit better like and a lot of those bands believe it or not being a drummer they'd be lost if they didn't have good good drummers you know and, yeah, and, and you're right when like I play guitar, yeah, and the odd time I'd sing, but never in public. Um, <laughs> but most of the time, I'm usually in my head, I think. The guitar and stuff, it's all to do with the drum. It's bass drum, snare drum, bass drum, snare drum, whatever pattern, I look out for it. Because me, I make music myself. I've got equipment here where I make music. I have a keyboard, I have a guitar, I have this MIDI lab thing. So I make music, so I'm always looking out for instruments and then how I can make it or how I can make the sound better. Yeah. Um, so then with back to the Clash, where you're saying with the drums, I found the Clash were not only a punk band, but a ska band. Yes, you're very true. And then when they went again, when they went over to... New York, and they got the side of the whole kind of hip hop kind of things, side of things, like kind of uh, Blondie did as well. That that was fantastic because that they took on the ghetto blaster, like we were just talking about yeah. with your dad, and that was so amazing, you know. So they definitely were kind of a ska band without doubt, you know. They were getting like all the musical seasons and sprinkling, sprinkling yeah. them all in their songs. Yeah. So. Definitely two bands that I always thought were quite inspiring uh, would be The Clash because the way they could use loads of genres and somebody could say it's punk, another person could say it's ska, but at the same time, everybody would agree. I think that's a very powerful thing to do. And with guitar, the Ramones. Yes. They play only three chords in all their songs. They do. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. Same here's, chords. Here's a great story. I've got a Ramon. You've probably seen it, haven't you? My Ramones t-shirt at home in our, sure. in our stairs. Yeah. And that was given to me by Joey Ramon, uh, or sorry, Johnny Ramon. Uh, yeah. I did a tour, a short tour of the East Coast of America with the band I was in, My Little Funnest, opening, supporting the Ramones. Yeah. And that was that was an absolutely oh, wow. amazing thing. And I was 18, 17, no, I was 17 when they did that. Wow. So that was that was uh, one of the biggest biggest things I've ever done. Totally. Yeah. If you yeah. look there, God. Oh I yeah. I see I can't it. point my finger. Yeah. There. There's yeah. a Ramones thing. Yeah. Yeah. There. And that was a t-shirt that I had, and I was walking around in it, and I went. Ooh, I wonder what this thing is. Yeah, and yeah. Now um, I'm going, wish it was my size. <laughs> <laughs> so and then I looked at a picture of me in an ACDC ad and an ACDC top <laughs> What the hell was I doing in that <laughs> as a baby or something? <laughs> oh, there you go. So you have to get that framed as well. Um, yeah, I think actually it's in the attic now that we've got it safe. Nobody touches the ACDC thing. Um, <laughs> I don't, at least never wore it. I think I wore it a couple of times, but we're kind of protecting it at this stage now. <laughs> Nobody touches it. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm nearly out of qu questions, but I'm just going to see. All right. I'm going to check. Is there any more questions that I can ask? Ah, here we go. Have you played with anyone who you've been starstruck by? Like, you're literally s saying a word so fast, you're nearly unconscious. You're literally starstruck by them. Has there anybody been Leave like Levon Helm, who's up be behind me. Levon, yeah. from yeah. the band. 
Yeah. I, I didn't. Th uh, do you ever remember? I know your father will remember MySpace. It was before Instagram, before Facebook and Twitter. And we all God, had a MySpace. Was there ever a time without the internet? <laughs> <laughs> and this one was called MySpace and it was on the internet. And everybody had a MySpace. And one of the things on it was who inspire, inspires you or who um, who would you love to meet? Okay. And oh so God, there was... I see where this is going. So continue, yeah. <laughs> so there was three names and... The three people I said was John Bonham, who yeah. I mentioned, who was the Led, drummer in Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin or, yeah. um, I used to call him Led Zeppelin <laughs> on stage. I, we're, we're... So I said, well, I'm not going to meet John Bonham. Unfortunately, he's left us, you know, he's no longer um... with us, you know. So then the other name was Gene Krupa, who I mentioned also. Yeah. Uh, uh, but he left us as well but I oh. said the other person uh, the third person was Lee Von Helm from the band and I said well it's you know he's still a, he's still with us but it's unlikely I'm I'm gonna meet him because I just put him up on this mantle that you know he's such an absolute legend sorry quickly is he from their band is that the band title the band. Yes, okay, I get it. Now continue, sorry. So I just double so, checking. And what you need to check out is the, a film to watch is The Last Waltz, okay? And it'd be amazing if you were able to sit down on your TV in the sitting room and watch this film called The Last Waltz. It's the last show that they ever did it's in San Francisco around 1976, I think. Yeah. And it'll change your life, okay? Wow, I'm definitely going to check that out. Leave okay. on um, the band, the, um, the last world's totally... This, okay. Like, this guy who went onto the space on the internet, and you got to meet him because of this wonderful thing. Um, and then I got to meet him because there's this festival in... Um, Tennessee because the and it was called Bonnaroo and he was on the same bill and I actually got just to go backstage and meet him and I couldn't even talk properly I was like I got my picture taken and after that we just were on the Bad. same bill as him doing several gigs and got to know him more and more and then we got to do a house a <laughs> gig at his house where he was putting on and the story goes on and on Got to know wow. him. It was unbelievable. Let's just say you had a voice crack for like 10 minutes when you were saying that. You yeah. didn't go high pitch, you didn't freak out, you just had a very long, unusual voice crack. Yeah, a voice crack for 10 years. I know what you're talking to. Him. Well, you met a lot of your heroes. I've met a couple of them. And it's great to see someone like you talking to someone like me. And Tell me I who you who would you love to meet? Who would you love, love, love to meet? Um, I've said this before, and to be honest, um, I'd love to meet John Creedon because he's into, like, this Creedon's Atlas of Ireland thing. That was interesting. I listen to a show every night. If he can no brain on his covering firm, I freak out. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to meet him, though he's all the way down in Cork. Uh, so Anybody but, else? internationally i was about to say dave fanning but i have met him <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm being a show off now um no you're not angus young because i thought he was such a rebel with the schoolboy. boy now, he, now you're talking about i him. always admired him uh the good old angus aussie so i'd love to meet him and uh Actually, the former members of Easy Beats, um, where I was talking to Thomas Walsh and he told me Easy Beats were basically pre-ACDC. And um, I like to talk to them about how did Easy Beats form? How did it form into this ACDC powerhouse that we know today and love? Um, so I'd love to talk about to Angus Young and some of the former Easy Beats guys as well, because yeah. I've loved ACDC for so long. Everybody in my class knows me 
they go with ACDC, they go, oh yeah, um, you're into rock music with ACDC. And stuff. Yeah, go, yeah. Yeah, seven albums, and yet I listen to them 20 times and they wouldn't get boring. Yeah. Um, and then I'd also love to meet the drummer because, to be honest, I think he must find it so hard to do, use similar drum beats every single song, but yeah. not make it sound boring. Um, yeah. So I love to talk to him as well. There's a lot of people out there that I love to talk about, mainly from bands like ACDC, who I've been into for a very long time. Um, and surprisingly, I wouldn't mind if I had like a, a 10 minute chat or something with Miles Davies. Um, I think it's Miles Davies, if I'm saying that wrong. God. Well, unfortunately, Miles isn't with us anymore. I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. I know. I, I, I would have loved to meet him though, simply because with his music, I was only listening to him today. I'm not into jazz, to be honest, I'm not into his music, but I love to hear his side of things with music. Okay. So, a lot of people out there. That's great. To, most yeah. of them I can't meet, um, yeah, including Miles Davis, but people like the Easy Beats guys and ACDC. That's brilliant. Them. That is great. It's phenomenal. It's so brilliant. That's why I like having those people down, just as a as you look at them as your kind of mentors, you, you're ones that influence you the most or something, you know? Yeah. That's great. So we are going to have to wrap up now because I've got no more questions um, and we've had loads of time. So do you mind if I now log off? I do. Well, it was fantastic talking to you, okay? It was so brilliant. And thanks for inviting me on your show. Thank you for accepting the invitation. I love this talk with you. So I'll see you, Graham. You're the best uh, DJ in town, nephew. And uh, and uh, I'll talk to you next time, whenever you have me on your show again next time. I'll see you, Graham. See you later, dude. Thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Logan Sounds Off. And if you have any questions or requests, you can email loansoundsoff at gmail.com.